Hey, what is up, everybody, and welcome back to our prediction of the 2024 presidential election two months out in the series where we're using statistics and data science to predict who is going to win this election. Now, this is the third video in the series. In the first video in the series, four months out, it was still Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, and we had predicted that Donald Trump was going to win. Then in the next video in the series, we had Kamala Harris just entered the race, and we had a whole bunch of other stuff going on as well. We had the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. We had Donald Trump naming his running mate. We had Kamala Harris naming her running mate. A whole bunch of stuff was going on. Now, a month later, we've somewhat stabilized, hopefully, in terms of what changes are coming up. And so this is an interesting time to check in and see what does our methodology say now, using the most recent polling data, about who is going to win this thing. So if you want a full breakdown of the methodology, including the code, please check out the previous video because I do go through everything in great detail there, including the mathematics and also the code. And so we'll skip that part in this video so that in this video we can just go straight to the results. The only part of the code that I want to call out is that we have updated the baseline level of uncertainty here. So if you remember from our previous video, we're setting a baseline level of uncertainty. That is to say that, you know what, even if we know the polling data and we know who won the last presidential election, there's still gonna be a bunch of uncertainty in this process, but that uncertainty should go down and down and down as we get closer and closer and closer to election day. So in the previous video, we had set this baseline level of uncertainty at 2%. And so we're saying that at this point, two months close to the election, we're going to set that at 1%. And so if you remember in that previous video, this is also more of an art than a science. All we know is that this should go down over time, exactly how much it should go down by, or what the final value of it should be at the day before the election, that is pretty up in the air. And now in just a moment, we're going to go ahead and look at what our method says about who is going to win this election two months out. But before that, let's remind ourselves of what we said just a month ago. Just a month ago, we said that there's a ton of uncertainty in the process, but our best guess about what the final vote, the final electoral vote is going to be, is that Harris is gonna get around 290 electoral votes and Trump is gonna get around 250 electoral votes. Let's see if that lines up with what we are getting today. Da -da -da -da. So this is the plot that we're going to look at. A quick reminder of how you read these plots. On the x-axis, you have the level of trust you place in the polling data. From the left-hand side being, I don't trust the polling data at all. I'm just going to predict who's gonna win this election based on which party won the previous election. And on the right-hand side, we have, I fully, completely, wholeheartedly trust the polling data and what it's saying today. Now, let's talk about this chart. The most obvious part of this chart is that even when we half the amount of baseline uncertainty, the error bars are still very, very big. And that should not come as any surprise. I think most people would say this is a very close race still, even with us kind of settling into the norm of things. And most podcasts and whatever you listen to, most news outlets say that this is still a very, very close race. And so our methodology is just reflecting that. Now, that said, if we look at the average lines, if we look at the average lines for either candidate, you'll notice that Kamala Harris is always above Donald Trump. Now you'll notice that that lead shrinks and shrinks and shrinks the more you trust the polling data because the polling data, especially for these swing states, is showing a very, very narrow margin. So the more you trust the polling data, the narrower and narrower that margin of victory for Kamala Harris would be. But you do see that no matter what level of trust you place on the polling data, all the way from no trust to full trust, if you're just going off of the average lines here, then Kamala Harris, sometimes with very, very, very narrow margins, is slightly beating out Donald Trump at all these different levels of polling data. So it should come as no surprise that our prediction this time around is going to be in favor of Harris, but the question is what is our exact prediction in terms of uh, the electoral votes that either candidate is gonna get? Now last time, given all the turbulence and all the changes that were going on, I put my level of trust in the polling data at 0.2. I don't have that much more faith in the polling data because we are still two months out. The timing of this video is interesting because by the time you watch this, the presidential debate, the first debate between Harris and Trump is probably going to be very soon in the coming days. And so that will probably change things quite a bit. But I think that I do trust the polling data a little bit more, but maybe not too much just yet. So maybe I'll put a 0.4 level of trust in the polling data. So if we go up from this 0.4 line, let's go ahead and try our best to read on the y-axis. So it looks like around 280 electoral votes for Kamala Harris and around 260 electoral votes for Donald Trump. 
Now, as we said, that is still a Harris victory, but notably that gap has shrunk from our prediction in the previous video. In the previous video, we were giving 290 to 250, and now we're giving around 280 to 260. So this is really coming down to a real nail biter, folks. To be clear, we still have two months. That's not a short amount of time. A lot can happen in two months. As we said, the debate that's coming up will likely be one of those big things that will change many voters' minds. And many other events are sure to come in the two months, but it is just really interesting to see these charts change so dynamically from just one month to the next. So if you have any comments, questions, or ideas for what to do in the next video, please do leave them in the section below. I hope y'all are enjoying this series so far, and I'll check back in with you one month before the election around the beginning of October. So everybody take care. Please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.